cash is king in a small business, especially in the fabrication and engineering space. And here's actually why. So when you are a small business, there are two things. There's profits and then there is cash flow, right? Ideally, they go hand in hand, but very often they are kind of a parallel thing. Sometimes they go a little bit like this and sometimes they converge again. Now you have to pay attention to both. Obviously, especially in the engineering side, it's like you want to do your quotation right. You want to get like the prices for the metal right, the working hours that you need, all the tools you may have to buy in order to machine something. And you need to make a profit at the end. That's the one side. Now, making a profit is all nice and good, but on the short term, you have wages, you have to pay your suppliers, you have to pay the electricity, gas, whatever it is. Um, and those are all expenses that very often come before you deliver something. Now, there are a couple of things you could be doing. One of the things is you negotiate favorable supplier terms. That means that you have longer time to pay your supplier than it actually than you actually need in order to turn the product out. For example, if you have to pay your supplier within 60 days, but your clients pay within, we have clients that range from seven to 90 days. I mean, there is like a variety in the, the a thumb rule is that the bigger the companies and the bigger they are as a customer for you, the longer they tend to take in order to pay you. But let's assume as a, you, your client pays within 30 days, right? Now you have 60 days of paying your suppliers. So that means that the moment you get the material in, that's when the clock starts ticking, you have to turn it around at least within one month so that your supplier then pays you when you have uh, that your customer then pays you when you have to pay your supplier. And if, if you think that that ain't possible, think again, the whole Aldi empire was built on that. The way Aldi actually financed their expansion was that they were, of course, because they are a retail brand. So that means the moment you grab something off their shelf is basically beep and then you immediately have to pay it. But what they did is they negotiated 60, 90 days. And I mean, the bigger, the longer they negotiated for payment terms, right? And that means that sometimes they had 90 day payment terms and maybe even longer. And in that time, so they had some, something like milk, for example, they had milk delivered and now they had 90 days to pay it, but they would only take seven days basically to sell it. And they had the cash at the end of seven days. So they had still 83 days left to work with that cash before they actually had to pay their supplier. Now that's a bit of a risky problem because if you use that cash for like expanding and especially in the fabrication business, expanding your capacity can be very costly. But if you then do not manage to fill it, you can end up in this cash squeeze. And this is where this profitability and the cash flow have to be managed. And sometimes, especially in, uh, in engineering businesses, but I'm sure in other businesses, it's kind of the same thing is you have treatment, you have to machine stuff, you have to weld it, bend it, whatever, whatever it is, it can easily take up a month from when you have the material until you are actually able to deliver it. And from that time onwards, you start with the payment terms. Now payment terms are one thing. Now you can go for invoice financing. It's something we use sometimes. And it's and there are plenty of like people out there that actually offer it. And how that works is basically as for, and it has fees. So you have to make sure in your profitability, you keep track on that. But what it basically means is if you give them an invoice and if you give them a delivery note, they will give you a certain amount of that invoice in cash within a couple of days. So that means that at the moment 
you are actually writing an invoice, you might be paid within a week, no matter if your client pays you 60 days later. Now, invoice financing means they will keep a fee and they will not give you 100% because they are covering their risk as well, as one, one of the tools you can be using. But it's for today, the, the focus is you have to look at the short-term cash flow, especially if you have staff. And I worked very long for a big electronic manufacturers. And if you look at what big companies are really good, and you see it right now in the Silicon Valley, in, in Meta, Google, Twitter, uh, right now, in like a couple of weeks and months ago, they all did huge job cuts. Why? Because they were uncertain about how the economy is gonna go. And they don't know if they will be able to sustain the profitability and the cash flow that they were having from ad revenue and all their other income sources. Now, what I've seen very often in contrast in small businesses, because it's mainly family oriented businesses, family owned businesses with very long time employees, very often the cuts are made too late. And that's, that's a major difference between a big business and a small business as bigger businesses tend to be faster when they think the market is going to turn or when there is uncertainty, they stop hiring. Sometimes immediately there's a hiring freeze. Nobody gets hired unless the CEO approves it. Then they, they lay off people. If people retire, they will not be replaced and so on and so on and so on. Now, there is a certain thing that there is a little bit more bacon, a little bit more fat on bigger companies. And if they lose 5% of the employees or 10% of the employees, it's not going to make a difference on the bottom line. Sometimes it's actually improving the efficiency, which is because people are not working like congruently, but they are hindering each other. So if you remove some of them, then you might actually get a little bit more growth. Now it's a little bit more tricky in a small business because let's say you have one office administrator. Now you can't let go 10% of that office administrator. It's what you think in the beginning, but what you might be able to do is reduce hours. And that's, that's the lesson for, for today. It's like you have to be very aggressive when it comes to cost cutting. And it sounds like that. And I, I've, I've been like, accused, I would say, for lack of a better word, of this, of, of that, as like that I don't care for the people that work in the business. And at that moment, I said, well, I do care very much for the people that work in the business. Here's the catch. If you have to make tough choices, right, you might need to let go a certain amount of people in order to save the rest. And very often that is overlooked. It's like, no, you don't, you don't have to do that, da, 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 da. But at the end, all, like, all the people in the business want to have a paycheck, being it weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, it doesn't matter. Like everybody wants to get paid. Now, sometimes you have to make those choices because otherwise you will not be able to survive. And that, that's the thing. And it's, uh, it's something I'm, I'm learning about every day, to be honest, is paying a lot of attention on the cash flow because from my past, I'm looking at the profitability. I'm coming from a, like a bigger company background and cash flow tends to be less of an option. I would always have a controller working side by side me when I was a manager and he would pay attention to the cash flow and he would tell me, you have to do this or you have to do that. But then bigger companies tend to be, and I say tend to be because some are not, better in cash generation. It's less tricky than smaller companies. Smaller companies can sometimes face liquidation. And that is not, that, that's not very seldom. That's actually quite often that small companies face liquidation because they can't pay their invoices right now 
but they might be very profitable a year from now, right? But still they have to liquidate and they have to cease to exist because they can't get through that cash squeeze. So when you're working in a small business, when you're buying a small business, you have to pay attention to how that business is generating the cash. Like how are the invoices split? Are they split evenly? Are you invoicing every 20 days and then there is nothing for 20 days? So because then you have a cash pile and it depletes and then you have a pile and it depletes. Are you seeing this? Are you like a more steady and it's never like this. It's going to be up and down, up and down. But how big are those variances? How good is the business in generating a constant cash flow? How good is it in invoicing every day? every week and how fast are you getting that that money and what are the payment terms to suppliers and so on you can get the data it depends on how systemized the business is when you newly buy it if it's a systemized business you can get that data <laughs> if there is no system in place like sage or zero or whatever accounting software they might be using if they don't really use it and sometimes they might say, yeah, we have an accounting like package and we have an accounting system, but are they filling the data right? And that's the other thing is you have to be careful when you look at that data to make sure that the data you are actually looking at is correct because otherwise you might make decisions that you later regret. So, while data is important, it's also important to make sure that you have the right data. So while you're going through that, just keep in mind as like there's cash flow and there's profitability. And having one or the other will not save you. You need both, but they have to be in balance. Because if you are good in cash generation, but on every order, like on every pound revenue you gain, you lose five pence, then you do the math. At one point you will just run out of cash, even though you are good at cash generating, but at one point it will just catch up. So you need to balance both things there. And that's, especially if you are in small businesses, that's very, very important. But also if you are a manager in a mid-sized company, or even in a big company, you might want to get together with your controller and ask them as like, how are we looking at profitability? How are we looking at cash generation and try to balance those two? It's going to lead definitely to a very interesting discussion. Cheers, guys. See you soon.